The world rewards the people who are best at communicating ideas, not the people with the best ideas. David Perel. Who else have the best ideas but feel like they're not the best at communicating them? I have these tricks that I learned in law and management consulting that will definitely help you organize your thoughts when you speak, remember what you actually want to say, and really get the point across in a very effective and eye-capturing way, leaving an impression on your audience. So let's get to them. Number one is finding a quote that expresses your idea. Quotes are concise. They're impactful and they get straight to the point. When you use quotes to open, you skip all of that rambling at the beginning where you're trying to find how do I start talking about this topic. You don't need to do any of that. You just give them the quote and then move on to the point, right? How many people have sat there listening to people talk for way too long and lost your interest? Or how many people have talked for way too long and saw the soul of people's eyes just disappearing? So. Start with a quote. I did this with this video as well. You're still watching, so this is a good sign. Let's move on to the second function of quotes. Quotes establish your credibility. We are taught to be judgmental, right? We're always looking for faults in other people's arguments, whatever it is that they're saying. Do we agree? Do we not agree? It's quite difficult to start an open conversation when the other side is very defensive. So by starting with a quote from someone that they know that they trust, then you've already aligned yourself to start from a very positive position, where the other person is willing and open to listen to what you have to say. This is what we do in law. This is what we do in management consulting. We always invite experts. So you don't have to believe me. You can believe whoever it is that has expertise in this field. This is what I do in my other video: how to articulate your thoughts. I use Steve Jobs. I use Aristotle. People very credible with important things to say, and I use them to get my point across. When you've already established credibility through others, then the rest of your talk gets so much easier. The third function of a quote is that it anchors your point. You prime the audience with what it is that you want to talk about. Help them be open to the idea, and then for yourself, it's kind of like a guidepost for you to, of where do I go next, right? You can transition from the quote to your main point and help you remember the link. So once people are hooked, then you want to just get to the point, and we move on to trick number two, which is to use intentional visuals. This is not any visuals. This is visual intended. To show at least one of the two things: one, change, and two, contrast. Let me show you with two examples. This is just a side project, trying to visualize mental models in a very simple way, so that even kids can understand. And you know, hopefully, they'll be curious enough to find out how to think better and make better decisions. So, this one is about speed and velocity, one of the most fundamental、uh, mental models. And I want to show the difference. Between speed and velocity, and also what happens when you change, right? The contrast and the change. We see that speed is about covering distance, whereas velocity has direction. Without using words, I can immediately show someone. If you are currently thinking about speed, you see that you're not really going anywhere. Then you might want to change and think about things in a velocity velocity perspective of thinking with direction. Showing change and contrast is so crucial because you give context to your point, right? Think about every time that you've made a decision, every time that something made you think, "Okay, I need to act." It's because it's saying that you need to change something, and/or it's because something compared to something else is better or worse, right? So that's the change as well as the contrast. So why do we want to put these points in visual form? There are two reasons for this. The first one is that our brains process visuals so much faster. It's literally at the blink of an eye, fifteen, thirteen to fifteen milliseconds. Whereas for words, it takes us about two hundred milliseconds. So we need to use so many more words to get the same point across over longer time periods. Whereas having a visual will get the point across immediately, and whatever it is that you say will be so much easier for the audience to understand. 
that's point number one. And point number two, more importantly, is that these visuals actually help you recall because they're so impactful, easy to process. Not only do your audience remember it, you remember it too. So even if your talk is just casual, you don't need to put anything up on the PowerPoint or whatever it is that you're doing. That's fine. These visuals will actually help you remember what you want to say and get the point of the change and the contrast across because you actually remember them instead of trying to remember bullet points of things that you need to say. Let me know in the comments if you currently visualize in this way. Now you've anchored your talk, you've established credibility, and you have a very easy transition from the beginning to the main chunk of your presentation, with just one quote, right? And then you have little recall images to help you get your point across in a very effective way that works with how we think, how we make decisions, which is showing change and giving the context of contrast. So now people are going along and they're buying your argument, right? You, it's really easy to organize your thoughts. You want to make sure that at the end you end very strong. And this is where so many people drop the ball and do not do that. Make sure you end with an action item. And here you don't want to end with just any action item. This is where a lot of people make the mistake of not thinking about their audience. Right? Humans, we are energy preserving creatures. We don't want to use excess energy for no reason. We want to survive and we want to thrive. So we want to make sure that the action item we give someone at the end is very simple. And I'll share just in a moment how this helps you establish your credibility long term as well. So first you want to make it simple. Let's use the example of, let's say, climate change, right? The very difficult issue to resolve with just one simple action step. Let's say that you think um, climate change can only be combated if people vote for the right leaders who are committed to this idea. I'm just making this up. Let's say that's what you think. It's a very high barrier action step for people to take, right? You have to get out there. You have to see which leaders are interested in. You have to go vote, right? That's not the action step you want to leave people with because they won't do it. Instead, you want to leave them with something super simple, like um, bring your own bag to the grocery store. Why? Because humans have consistency bias. That is, if we made a previous commitment to something, we feel a tension every time we don't do it. We feel the tension every time we're not acting to our previous commitments. So let's say you do um, grocery, bring your own bag to the grocery store as your action step. Every time that person goes to the grocery store, which is pre pretty frequently, they will be reminded, or at least there's a chance of them remembering your talk, remembering how important combating climate change is, right? So in that sense, over time, after your talk is finished, you give them just something enough for them to commit themselves and feel that consistency bias to act towards that. Then once there are other things, let's say in the news that they're talking about ice melting, you know, polar bears not having ice to stand on to get fish that they need to sustain themselves, then they'll be rem reminded, okay, I've already committed to doing my part in helping combat climate change. It's not a one person effort. And maybe then I should go out there and vote, right? So in this sense, we want to create that consistency bias, but make it easy enough for people to do so that they don't feel overwhelmed and then just say, okay, I can do it. That's the end of it. And all of the planning and the organizing you've done, you've lost them at the end, right? So make sure it's something very simple for them to do. And just like that, you got your point across and it stayed with people over time. And that's really what it's about is organizing your thoughts in an effective way so that you don't end up trying to memorize everything and get really nervous and have your mind go blank. Just use the quotes, the visuals and the action step at the end to help you organize whatever it is that you want to say. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It will really help with the algorithm and subscribe if you haven't already. I have this other video on how to articulate your thoughts. 
Uh, if you're interested and ready to now make it even more impactful like Steve Jobs does. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.